Yeah, um, that was impressive BCU. Obviously, their the physicality at the rim and uh, quickness, um, you know, worthy champion uh, for the league and the team that's obviously playing very, very good basketball. Uh, so, you know, I think they're, they're a team that should be, you know, really considered as it relates to, you know, NCAA tournament at large birth. If you can go through our league the way they have, um, they should be an NCAA tournament team. Um, and uh, I thought they imposed their will a little bit at the rim throughout the game. Questions? Patrick. You guys took care of the ball pretty well there for the first know, 16, 17 minutes yeah. or so. And then after that, kind of got a little sideways. Was, was that disconcerting a bit, or did you just know that there's a, there's a little bit of that baked in when you're dealing with it? I mean, there's a little bit of it baked in. I think, you know, obviously, to, you know, people you talk a little bit about our depth and the fact that we really don't have many guards on the team, mm -hmm. but we do have really good guards. Uh, some of it was it's the fine line between when, you, when they take it out of um, – when they take it out of the guard's hands and you have to play to the short roll and our, your big guys are now kind of being playmakers and, and our guys are capable. And then I thought a couple of times we tried to, we tried to uh, interior pass or maybe take a little bit more difficult of a shot at the rim. Cause you know, you're down, you're trying to get back and get quick twos and maybe get fouled or whatever. When I thought there might've been times where we could have played off two feet and sprayed spread it out but again it's a little bit of what they do it's a little bit of uh the nature of you know our team but you know quite honestly for the you know it wasn't necessarily our offense at times i thought you know we had we struggled to get stops uh no matter what defense we play i'm oh, sorry um when your entire front court has four fouls for the, like, pretty much our front court gets fouls a lot i think we foul a lot in the front court you know i will say that i will also say like where I come from and what I know of professional basketball, they don't let you hold people on the perimeter. They call that very tight. It seems to me that we call things tighter near the basket here, like in the post, more so than on the perimeter. So that's why our big guys are probably in a little bit more foul trouble. Yeah, so they're just gonna fall. And we don't throw it in there. They don't really, it's not really who we have, to, you know, but yeah. So I'm just gonna put, uh, when you're playing extended minutes with four fouls, you know, what do you tell your guys? Like, no, you can't really, especially when you're down, you can't really worry about it. I mean, it's not, it wasn't that. I don't think they were like playing not to foul. I just think you know, it is what it is. Jake? Yeah, like you said, BC is obviously a pretty uh, tough physical team on both ends. Mm -hmm. How do you prepare for a team like that? And you yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to prepare. No, I was happy with our press break. We didn't really get trapped in the backcourt much at all. Spent some time on doing some things to avoid that. I thought we did a good job of that. I thought we took care of the ball. were not too many pick sixes. Um, we lost Shriver there a little bit on a couple of interesting plays, I thought. Um, and then uh, uh, give Brandon Johns credit. He makes a three. You know, he's made 12 on the year. He makes a three to start to half. It's a gutsy call by Coach Rhodes. You know, the way we play the pick and roll at that position. He was going to be open. Good, 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 good shot by Johns. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, thought, I thought we did a good job against the pressure. How would you kind of size up the regular season at this point, complete 16 and 15? Yeah, you know, I think for us to be 10 and 8 in the league is, is very, very good, you know, for where we are. Uh, you know, you have some disappointments, different games here and there, but, you know, for the most part, even tonight, you know, we're down 17 or whatever, and storm back, make it a one possession game. Um, you know, would you like to have a little bit more depth? Would that have helped us maybe win one or two more games or whatever? Maybe. But, you know, it's also like maybe Max Edwards doesn't develop into the rookie of the year, you know, because you're not playing the freshman so much. Or, you know, I think the five guys in particular have had career years, you know. Obviously, Max has because he's a rookie. But, um, so for that, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the guys that come off the bench to play their role as best they can. can. Um, you know, I would say if we signed up for a winning record in league for the first time in six years or whatever, I think everyone would have been happy with that. Although, you know, again, you always say, well, we, we lost this one a lot. But you could turn it the other way, too. We win overtime games. So whatever. Good. What does your preparation look like this week as you're going into a situation where you can play back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games? Yeah, I mean, it's a good question. I haven't really thought much about what we'll do Monday. We're going to do something Monday, but... You know, I think you just got to play every game and not worry about the next one. So, you know, what we have to do is work on us a little bit.
best we can, and then prepare for um, whoever we're going to play. But you know, we don't know who we're going to play. That's the good thing, good and bad of whatever having a having a buy is uh, is it's nice to to not have to play that first game, and you also you know trying to figure out okay who might that be and how do we best prepare on film and everything like that. Um, but we'll take tomorrow off. Coaches won't. The coaches will try to figure out what we might do on Monday. Steve. Chris, if you can address the rally from 17 down in the final minutes, what do you feel you uh, need? You know, I almost broke my stool and uh, was close. To, it would have been a really bad thing because it was awfully close to, uh, to, to breaking the stool. We, I don't think we could get a new stool in time. So uh, it's good, good, good that we didn't. No, I just, you know, I was kind of fired up about a couple of different things. And, wasn't really mad at the players, but I was fired up, and I unleashed that a little bit on them. Um, and it wasn't, you know, I thought we just played better defense, and I thought we were kind of in a little bit of desperation mode, uh, urgency mode, and that allowed us to get stops. And, and then we got out, and I thought we made some good plays. Max made a beautiful three on a out of bounds play out of the timeout, which was uh, was timely. And, uh, I think my, my decision not to foul up uh, down three with 55 seconds could be a mistake. But, you know, we thought of it by getting them in the one-on-one, -on -one, but we were playing good defense. So I'm like, eh, we give them another shot to play good defense right now. And that's what we chose. It was the wrong choice now. But if we'd have got a stop, you know, then, then it would have been the right choice. But even still, then they make, uh, we come down and it goes through Hunter's hands. And that would have been a, probably a dunk maybe a dunk and a foul, and now it's two points with 15 seconds, set our defense a little bit, maybe if you get fouled. So, you know, I was proud of the guys. They've been that way all year, so which is great. And it felt like it took a little while for uh, Brennan and James to get going. Was it something they did, that VCU did? No, I think, it, you know, Davidson did the same thing. Um, you know, they're going and putting two on the ball and trying to get it out of their hands early. And in the first half, I think, Hunter, no, and Ricky and Hunter had fouls, but in the first half they had like 15 points. I think Noel might have had four or six, so like 20, plus 20 points from those guys, which is a lot, because we had to get it out of the uh, of the pick and roll, and those guys became playmakers and finishers. But ultimately, as the game goes on, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm glad that we were doing that, but all, but the two guys need to go have the ball and make some plays, and it's a little bit more difficult with, with VCU speeding up us, but ultimately kind of got going downhill a little bit. David, last one. Um, can you talk about uh, Hunter Bean's sort of emergence as a scorer these past few games? You know, I feel like today if he didn't get into foul trouble, the first half he might have set a new career high again. But How many do you have? I don't know. He had 14 on the day. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he's a good finisher. I uh, got behind the defense a number of times. Uh, and he's, he's a vertical athlete that, you know, can finish plays. He can make some decisions on the short roll. We were in the short roll. A couple passes tonight could have gone the other way for us. But, um, the guy's uh, a valuable player, especially when you have a guy like James, who's such a phenomenal pick and roll player, to have a big guy to go with you that can short roll and deep roll for a vertical threat. Like, those two are a very good combination. Yeah, and then uh, just uh, one more is, uh, I know there are a few of the seniors who are honored today have another year of eligibility. Yeah. Do you have any word on any of them? Or? No, we didn't really talk much about it. I mean, obviously those will be discussions, you know, when we're done. Great. Thanks everybody. Thank